Hello everyone, it's me, Robin, from Coach You For Geeks, and this is this way, point this way, Robin. <laughs> this is back, this is back. <laughs> some way, it's a mirror. Um, and today we're talking about Twitch, hang on, hang on, we've got an intro. Oh, the snazzy. Uh, Look at that. Snazzy. Snazmataz. Thank you very much. Yeah, that's uh, a trending hashtag. I've definitely heard that before. <laughs> so whether you're watching us on Twitch, whether you're in the Facebook group, whether you're part of the hashtag replay crew, uh, welcome to Twitch 101 with Trista Bites, the amazing streamer who's uh, retro games, uh, does interviews at comic cons and gaming conventions covers stuff for a variety of nerdy websites and outlets his co-host with jason bradbury i can't remember it's a long time called the 80s 80s electro breakdance party it's it's short it's very hashtagable it's a short <laughs> neat short title that we went for we also talk about 90s stuff as well as 80s stuff but other than that it's uh but it's, good fun. it's good fun and also uh up and coming you 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 don't give yourself enough credit for the audience that you have grown and regularly streamed to with um retro gaming current gaming uh geeky chat unboxing all sorts of stuff so you you should be a bit more yay about yourself a, a bit more Thank just generally yay bit more i can yay. also be yay about uh, my wonderful clipboard that I decided to call it video games IRL that we we co-present together. Yeah, you, know, you look that off the list of things. This is running around wearing this this snazzy spangly game show host jacket that totally didn't fit with with my wonderful pound shop creation clipboard. It's one, one of the highlights of my career so far, and I hope we get to do it again at some point when all the uh, the live gaming of, uh, conventions are back up and running. Absolutely. Video games in real life where I turned a bunch of video games into real world stupid games, which we've done at EGX and uh, play. Play. A play down in Margate. That was like where the last, the I last... was shot in the face with a Nerf gun. Yeah, I also threw a pack of bullets yeah. in Octavius's face. Sorry. Um, yeah. <laughs> there were a few injuries. Um <laughs> <laughs> Great. So we've got an audience. People in the audience, if you've got questions, please do type them in. Terry's there. Hi, Terry. Hello. We, we can bring you up on screen. Um, but we're not just here to put people's faces on screen today, are we, Bex? We're here to talk about all things streaming from uh, what tech you need, getting started, growing your audience, what you should play, what you should stream, and dealing with those pesky on-camera nerves. Um, mm -hmm. But before we begin, hi Vic. <laughs> say hello to everyone who says hello. Um, where can people follow you? Because that's very important. People can find me. My name is Trista Bites, spelled B Y T E S, because I thought I was being funny. Um, I can explain <laughs> where the name came from and how you should pick a better name if we want to do that as part of this Q and A as well. And um, I can be found on Facebook, Twitter, Instagram. I also put great content regularly up on YouTube, and I stream now full time on Twitch as well. Full time. Like yeah, I I think doing sort of three to eight hours a day counts as full time yeah. for Twitch when you take into account all the other hours that go into streaming that people sometimes don't quite factor in when they're looking at their time scales. That yeah, it's pretty much full time now. That's a, a lot of time, full time streaming, nurturing the audience, putting content out there. You're busy, You're busy. How do you have yeah. time to do the hair? Because we've got <laughs> loving the blue hair. <laughs> Um, I, I put remarkably little effort into my hair. I put a lot more effort into everything else I do. The things that people don't notice I put a lot of effort into. Those are the things that I put effort into. The hair, not not so much. <laughs> I'm going to be honest. <laughs> We've got a few more people saying hello. Hi, Retro Games. Thanks for joining us. Hi, Savage. And Terry likes being on screen. It makes it feel <laughs> Brilliant. That's enough about them. Back to you. Uh, and back to Twitch. What, how did your... Twitch venture 
Twitch, Twitch adventure begin. Yeah. It could be an adventure. I like that yeah. idea. We'll call it a Twitch adventure. I'm Twitch running adventure. with that. My adventures <laughs> in the land of Twitch are an extension, or originally were an extension, of my adventures in the land of YouTube. So I've been on YouTube for, it's just over four and a half years now. And mm -hmm. I, the YouTube channel started off by mistake. Um, how do oh, you accidentally I've start a YouTube channel? I've accidentally put I've up accidentally a of content. I've a YouTube channel and, and spent like weeks <laughs> making content. Uh, but originally the YouTube channel, I made it to learn how to film, to edit, to present on camera. It was designed originally just to be a way of practicing those skills. And I wanted to use the YouTube channel as a small, just, 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 just show reel, basically. Mm. I thought that my YouTube channel would consist of occasionally put a video up there, it would be a show reel, and I'd go and present on other people's YouTube channels. However, after four and a half years of running my own YouTube channel, I had to kind of start accepting that I am a YouTuber and I run a YouTube channel. Um, <laughs> but it took me a little while. I kept saying, I'm not a YouTuber. I'm just, I'm just practicing. I'm just practicing. But then it was like, you're putting a video out every week. Yeah, you're going to events and you're filming all these interviews of indie comic book writers and indie games developers. I was like, yeah, I do seem to still be doing that. And I just kept like originally learning skills and stuff through it, but it just kind of evolved. So mm. I didn't really set it up necessarily from the ground up in a way that was designed to be an ongoing channel. I didn't set it up with it in mind thinking it was ever going to be like a major part of a, a business or a career in any way, shape or form. And Twitch started slightly differently because YouTube started with me going, I just want to learn how to do this. No one's ever going to watch it. I'm just, I'm just going to practice. Uh, Twitch, however, was people relentlessly telling me I needed to be on Twitch. Just, just people just, just kept telling me you should be on Twitch. Just why are you not doing this? You're, you're, you're funnier in real life. It, it's, you, you never stop talking about this stuff because like, <laughs> just, just go on Twitch. And I was like, I don't know, I don't know, I don't know. I didn't get it as a platform originally, I wasn't sure what the appeal of it was. So mm -hmm. I went, I started watching some other streamers and for a while I still didn't get it. I still just didn't understand why anyone enjoyed it. And then I stumbled across a few streamers where I was like, that's it. That's, that's the thing. That's why people are watching this. That's why this is fun. And they were the people that were very engaging. They were talking to chat. They had a brilliant sense of fun or they had something they wanted to share. And I was like, oh, okay, now I understand this. And I set up my own Twitch channel and I thought, okay, I'll try this out because people have been watching the YouTube channel for years. They might want to talk to me. So I just come back from five uh, weeks in Tokyo and I'd been filming content out there as well as having just a crazy adventure because um, that was my birthday treat to myself was sofa surf my way around Tokyo on a last minute flight, just like a true crazy person does. Um, and I was like, okay, so I've got loads of cool stuff from Tokyo and I didn't really want to do like loads of pickup videos for YouTube. It's not really what I do on YouTube, but I thought, well, that might be quite fun for people that want to talk to me on Twitch. So I did my first Twitch stream and like 70 people showed up and I was like, I was shaking. <laughs> Cause I was just like, ah, uh, this is not the same as YouTube. This is not the same as YouTube. And there was all these people, thankfully, obviously was, there were a few people I knew because they were come over from the YouTube channel. And I did four streams talking about all the stuff I'd been up to in Tokyo for five weeks, because also the YouTube channel had obviously been quiet for that time as well. And by like the, the sort of the fourth show, I was like, I actually, this is quite fun. I, I think, I think I'm, I'm, I get why, why this is a thing now. This is quite fun from both directions, the interactivity of it, and the just the ability to have that immediate feedback and the ability mm -hmm. to answer people's questions like you were having you know as close to a conversation in the same room with a bunch of people as you can whilst it also being uh, a crowd so it fits in this space between youtube videos and being live on stage mm -hmm. and it is a different space to that and i found that actually that was really fun and really enjoyable and people said that they were enjoying it and I thought I'd do it for a bit longer and that it'll be a year at the end of the month and now I've gone full-time so I guess I'm now also a Twitch streamer. Looks like it, full-time Twitch streamer. So it's <laughs> that uh, interactivity, that in yeah. immediate feedback so you can adjust what you're doing and that lack of having to spend hours editing, is that also appealing? 
editing I, it depends with editing sometimes you can do i mean i i view these things as just very separate with mm. editing i can put together a specific narrative like things like the introduction to my video at the pokemon dx center in tokyo i put together shots of me walking in looking confused at the buttons in the lift getting out the lift and i put funny sound effects on and stuff like that and you can do something very different with that it's very time consuming but it's a very it's a very different output and Twitch is more like being in a room with uh, a mixture of a bunch of your mates and just anyone else that could walk in as well, who then may become part of that group too. And you just, you can, you can bounce off on tangents and you can do things. So I view it as a very different experience, both for the person who's, who's doing it and for the viewers as well. And I enjoy them both for, for very different reasons. So uh, Vic agreeing that the interactivity of Twitch is, is definitely the best thing. Yeah. So we've got some eager Twitchers, streamers, Twitchers bird watching in the audience there. Hello, everybody. We've got Israel working at the moment. Hello there, Trump man. Um, so I think we know what it is. We know that it's a streaming platform that yeah. enables interaction and gaming and all sorts. Um, We've touched on this. What's Mixer though? That's that's turned up. Yeah, Mixer is is uh, another Twitch. I guess is the way you describe that. <laughs> um, in the way that there's lots of other services than YouTube, but uh, uh, effectively, um, Twitch is 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 the largest, the longest standing service that that does this. Mixer is the the, the rival platform for me. I I went straight to Twitch, A, because I didn't know Mixer existed, and I'm not even sure it did just when I first started. How long has Mixer been around? I'd need to check that. See, that's as much, much I know about it. Prize and, for the first uh, person in the audience to tell us. Quick, Google it. Prize Carry for on. the first person with Google. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> so Encouraging interactivity, Bex. Yeah, good. <laughs> See, you've got it. You've nailed it. <laughs> so Twitch and Mixer are both built ground up are aimed at being these interactive live mediums where you are talking back to people you are interacting with people twitch has been around longer it has some benefits in that regard as in they have learned a lot of learning and a lot of evolving there is also some issues where there's legacy stuff where some of the code is very old so you have plus and minuses there it also has a huge audience and some of the largest best known streamers and um, things in place like that mixer is newer it's smaller it's it's more looking for early adopters for people to watch things there so you have less competition but it's also much less well known and there are less famous faces to draw people into it even if they threw money at particular names we won't mention to go and move yeah. over to their service so <laughs> it is it's a lot of it comes down to personal preference if you can build your audience wherever you want to build your audience there's enough room on both platforms for anyone to grow twitch is just the one that i was recommended it's the one that a lot of my audience on youtube were already aware of and it's therefore the kind of direction that that i went in for sure youtube as i've said it's great for videos. Their live feature is bolt-on. It is very much a later bolt-on feature. It is useful to be able to do live streaming on YouTube. I've done a couple of live streams on YouTube, but it, it, it just isn't built in the same way. It's an additional service for people who are using YouTube. It isn't so much designed completely around that interactivity. Also for anyone that's looking to do things as a career, who's looking to move things forward in that direction, if you actually want to earn money, and I don't think there's anything wrong with wanting to earn money for the amount of hours we put into these things, um, it's much easier to do that on Twitch. Twitch has a ton of stuff built in and a ton of extra stuff that is designed to work with it off the bat. It's all there. It's 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 all designed for that. YouTube, much less so. So you're having to jump through a lot more hoops and it isn't anywhere near as direct as things like Twitch, where you can just say, I want to make people be able to, to do things as they were doing to me. On uh, We've added some bonus streams, because again, the fun thing with Twitch is the audience can tell you stuff they want. They want me to play Alien Isolation. Because <laughs> they oh, hate me. Have so, you and, uh, washed your pants? <laughs> I just threw all my clothes out and bought new ones, mate. So <laughs> and they can do things like I made it so you could cheer, um, you cheer in bits, which are, which are a very small currency effectively. And 
for a small cheer, they could send Ripley in as the cavalry and she'd say, get away from her, you beep. And uh, a gif of Ripley would appear. And for, for, for 666, you could make a xenomorph appear with an incredibly loud screaming noise. Remarkably few people opted for the cheaper option there. I spent seven <laughs> hours being terrified. I dropped the controller a few times. And that type of interaction is just so much fun. Not for me in that case, but for everyone else, so much fun. And you also have things like a lot of games now, especially loads of indie games do this, I've noticed, where they build in Twitch interactivity to the games. So people in chat can type in things and they affect the game. So there's an indie game developer I've interviewed a couple of times. They have a game called Nature's Zombie Apocalypse which is the one where you're playing animals that are the only things left after the zombie apocalypse. And you've got, you know, like a bear with a machine gun and a duck with a, a baseball bat taking on comedy zombies. And chat can say if they want to send more zombies, if they want to send you aid, if they want to send more bullets your way, and they all vote in chat and that directly affects the gameplay. And that's another thing that you get on Twitch that you don't really get on another other things yeah there's a video on my youtube channel with the with the person who, who created nature zombie apocalypse just two guys made that game it's it's preposterous and fun but it has all this twitch interactivity built into it and that's another reason why i think twitch is sort of ahead of other things because they have those relationships in place they put all of those mm -hmm. capabilities out there for games developers to make these fun things and then you've got all the other stuff like marbles and races and the mini games where chat can be involved that way and i've got a game which is uh i think it's called kitten vr game and i'm pretty sure there's a, a mod for that where all the cats can be named after people in chat <laughs> so all, all the cats Terrible. running around the spaceship can have little name tags that are the people in your chat just stuff like that it's just fun and it adds to that really fun interactivity kind of sense that you get with Twitch. And you just don't get that to anywhere near the same degree with the other alternative things that are out there like Facebook gaming and, and YouTube and, and to a certain extent Mixer as well. Mm -hmm. Oh, Terry, don't accidentally download <laughs> Grindr. They're, they're, slightly, they're so, slightly different, yeah. yeah. Before you download an app, do just double, double check. Um, they're a different type of game, definitely. Grinding <laughs> in computer games, different to, to grinding outside of of computer games. Yeah, <laughs> uh, <laughs> we've got a couple of questions from the audience yeah, no before worries. we continue um, through the through the points we're gonna gonna do. Uh, Digital orphanage. Did the lockdown influence your decision to go full time with streaming? It did. Yes. Um, in my case, in particular, uh, my day job as a freelance graphic designer was was, was very much winding down before lockdown. And I was considering a very serious choice uh, of, do I go full into to, to doing the presenting work? Because I've been doing presenting work, obviously, with you and others on stage at events and stuff. Or do, do I go full into that? Or do I basically go back to the day job? And I was making that very difficult decision just before lockdown. And lockdown took one of those options completely <laughs> away from me. And I went, well, OK. Maybe I don't be a wimp on this. Maybe I don't go back to designing, you know, law firm websites and, and medical interface, the interface like designs and stuff like that, which is what my work had basically had become over the years. And um, I'd, I'd just slowly started feeling that I wanted a creative outlet and I, I was getting so much more happiness from what I was doing with things like YouTube, uh, being able to promote the indie comic scene, the indie game scene, interview those people, discover all those things that was making me feel very like fulfilled and it's a lot of work but it obviously it's difficult to to make money to call that a living and it was being coming too much work to be doing that on top of a full-time day job and then lockdown came along and i said well i guess i can either sit in a corner and cry about this or and i can say or i can say right okay if there's going to be even the tiniest potential possible positive thing to take from this if that's if that's a possible thing I should just go for it. And I threw myself 100% in, into the Twitch streaming and the content creation. Wonderful. You, you've got to take uh, risks in life. Uh, if, yeah. you don't, if you don't go for it, you'll never find out. I'm so really yeah. pleased it's working for you. <laughs> if you um, have the opportunity to do that, then I would suggest people do. And I'd suggested that to someone else who's a, I won't say which person, but a content creator who was saying, I want to quit my really, really boring job and leave London and go full-time YouTube. And they were like, is this sensible? And I looked at him and I went, mate, you're in your early 20s. You can get another job you hate and come back to London later. 
Mm. You've got no dependence, no responsibilities. You said you've got a decent amount of savings behind you. Oh, just just do it. I was like, if it's if you, if you didn't work out, you can come back. And they did, and they've now got I think it's like twenty thousand subscription like on um on YouTube. They've got sponsors. They're they're doing really really well. They've like way outpaced me. They just threw themselves into it because they 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 could do at that time. So my channel's been a very slow grow, and they've just thrown themselves in, and they're super talented. Mm. So sometimes. You, you take that you take that risk you weigh it up with what is sensible if you've got three children to feed then you know unless your <laughs> your significant other or your savings are enough to, to deal with that then you have to take a bit of a slower route which i have um, with with building my stuff but if you can i guess try it because if if you're the situation you're in is you're working a job you utterly hate that you could definitely get another one of what have you got to lose yeah Definitely. Um, Pixar makes a good point here. It's that, it's that initial jump for many people. So many things in life is is where people find themselves stuck, just taking that step and, and leaping mm. over the edge into something new where you don't know what the outcome is going to be. You don't know how it's going to go. You don't know how people are going to receive you. But you've got to get over that and just have a go and find out. That's the only yeah. way you'll ever know. Do, like the sort of halfway house approach I did was I streamed twice a week for whatever it was like sort of seven months or so and that slowly built up the following and I learned the skills as well like I said the first stream I ever did I was shaking and I'd done years of YouTube videos before that but still that that live thing it still had that effect on me and I built up so so I had a a small wonderful little group of people around me who've been incredibly supportive now I've said right I want to do this full time so I did build that up before taking that big leap so that there are various routes to to do things but I think it's more about the mindset of it and mm. uh, a mixture of sort of thinking realistically can I take this risk and how can I work this differently if I can't just you know quit my job like today and um and just having the right mindset to say like no I'm just gonna try and if it goes wrong it goes wrong but I'm going to regret it more if I don't even try. It's, it's the same with the, the stuff that we do on stage at events. The first time we did VG IRL, I was shitting myself because it was a, a bunch of content that we could play tested in a park. We'd got a big stage at EGX, um, and there were a few technical disasters along the way, but you just and they go were for hilarious, it. Though. And it was brilliant. We had a... We, Sure, we had a fun time. <laughs> and the thing is that I think that people need to bear in mind that I, they, I'm being a complete hypocrite right now. I'm just going to put that disclaimer. I'm being a complete hypocrite right now. But you need to bear in mind, she says, who totally thinks the opposite to things I'm about to say. But they put you on that stage for a reason. They gave you that stage and they trusted you to do that show. So they've seen they wouldn't do that if they thought it was some massive risk and that you know, it was all going to fall apart horrifically because it's their necks on the line. It, it's their it's their event. So they wouldn't have mm -hmm. done that if they didn't think there was a highly good chance that it was going to be a, an entertaining show and worth their while. So I, I totally I'm being a hypocrite right now. I'm aware. But you know, you, you, <laughs> if, if people were showing up and watching and people are, are laughing, if that's the intention, of course, with video games, at IRL, it was although, you know, as long as they're laughing and having fun, who cares regardless? Mm -hmm. Um like that, that that means something if if they don't like it they won't show up and they won't put you on the stage it's mm. you can kind of you just have to kind of say like right if people are here then i'm doing something right and whether that's five people or 500 people you're still doing something right but for most people their audience isn't going to be large from the start you came from a place where you already had a following on youtube so you say your first stream had about 80 people most people are going to have a couple of their friends, unless they've got a big following elsewhere. A couple of friends, maybe. I've seen people streaming to no one, but you've got to stick with it and find your feet and discover what's right for you. Um, we've, got, we've got a question, long, long comment from Chumpy Man. Uh, he's tried to make his own videos for YouTube or streams. Probably biggest problem is he's always hated his own voice. That's something that everyone goes through. Is it something you deal with at the start since it's new and scary to do? I used to do a podcast. We became the number we were the number one gaming podcast for coaching with coaching for geeks podcast for a while i hated my voice i hated editing i hated listening to myself back I was like, what who who is this this who is this in my ears this stranger why is he umming all the time 
why why does he sound nothing like what goes on in my head i think it's something everyone goes through at the start a lot of people do yeah i don't like the sound of my own voice at all i never have and i spent years editing youtube videos where i have to look at my own face which i don't particularly like and listen to my own <laughs> voice that i don't particularly like um, you just you just have to kind of be like okay that's kind of that's just kind of a thing that's sort of tough and uh, learn a little bit of self acceptance i guess mm, because mm. It, it, it is a thing that most people most people feel because you sound and look different recorded than you experience when you're in your own head and yeah it, it is it is it is bizarre for most people but you do just kind of get used to it after a while and it, it becomes less of an issue and if it's something where it helps you to become a bit more okay with the sound of your own voice then it's only going to be doing you favors in the long run on multiple levels anyway so if you want to do something don't let don't let that stop you because it's something that you can work on and it's going to benefit you in life and ultimately it doesn't matter what you think of your voice or how you look it's what other people think and if they like it and they like what they do what you're doing um, of course, you need to enjoy it. You need to not be having a shit time streaming, but you're trying to appeal to other people rather than mm. you. Um, oh, Terry wants us to narrate on Audible. Oh. Tell us in the comments what you'd like us to narrate and maybe we'll make that happen. <laughs> <laughs> um, also, how do you go about making friends and contacts within the Community that allows you to do interviews and crossovers. We met at Comic Con. Mm -hmm. um, we met at MCM. Yeah. Mm. Uh, uh, one of, I, one of I my was bloggers. recommending comics at you as well, wasn't I? Yeah, we we were in the Red Dwarf press conference. Yeah. Uh, we had a chat. Um, one of my writers we met again in a queue at Comic Con. Other people just from hanging around, chatting with people. Yeah. Networking what? is best done when you're not really thinking of it as networking. So you want to interact with people that you find interesting and that you want to have conversations with and that you have similar interests to. So I, I talk to loads of people. I'm, I'm one of those people that will sit and have conversations with strangers on the bus if they look like they want to chat or if they start talking to me. I, I'm just, I guess, a weirdo. Um, <laughs> I, I, I've just always thought there's so many interesting people in the world. And if I go to Comic-Con or if I go to a, a games convention, I'm then in a room with tens of thousands of people that probably have a similar interest to me. You know, I can just look at people's T-shirts a lot of the time and go, oh, look. They're all wearing T-shirts with logos of things I really like on them. You've got a good chance you can walk up to someone wearing like a Dragon Ball Z T-shirt and go like, hey, is this even your final form? You know, and something <laughs> will happen. They'll either roll their eyes at you or they'll laugh. And, and I think it's just about not being afraid to just strike up conversations. And if those conversations don't work, being able to sort of politely exit them and find someone else to talk to. Uh, and just the same way you make friends with anyone um, in general, really. And I think it's made... Uh, I think it's been good practice for me to go to some networking things and sort of just learn how to, to do that because sometimes the most interesting people aren't the ones that are obviously famous or obviously good contacts. They, they're just the people you meet. You don't know where they're going to be in a year's time. You don't only want to be talking to the people who have got 20,000 followers, 30,000 followers, a million followers. Sometimes the person that's really interesting and has these awesome ideas, but they've only been in the industry for a week you talk to them six months later and they're head of department somewhere because they are interesting because they had that potential. So don't like be so ruthless, I think, with your networking and don't worry that people aren't going to want to talk to you because you aren't famous enough or something. People want to talk to people because they're interesting. They don't mm. just want to talk to someone that's there to like kiss their behind and be like, oh, yeah, you're amazing. Please help me get more followers. Yeah, because they get a million DMs like that every day on Twitter. And, and they don't want it in real life as well. And I yeah, think when, it's like yeah. if you're going in looking for to get something out of meeting that person, you're doing it wrong. You're mm. going in looking to maybe make a connection, and those connections that you make are the ones that are carried forward. That and you start following each other, you start interacting like we did online, mm. and you become you develop that relationship and, and nurture it. And who knows, maybe something like a collaboration will happen we've actually put yeah. a lovely guide together uh from networking for nerds and introverts available on the coaching for geeks 
website, which uh, is all about finding the things that you have in common, meeting people at Comic Con because you've got a, a connection. If you're at a retro gaming event and someone's cooing over Spectrum games and you like Spectrum games, just you, you've already got a connection. You've already got something yeah. in common. You can already broach that ground. I think and, people are afraid of the rejection. They're afraid they're going to talk to mm -hmm. someone and that person isn't going to want to talk to them. But that's okay. It's okay if you don't want to talk to someone and it's okay if someone doesn't want to talk to you. It isn't a, a direct correlation to your value yeah. as a human being. They might just be very engrossed in looking at those Spectrum games, looking for something very, very particular and not like talking to human beings. Like, it's it's okay. Yeah, they might and, just and hate it, people <laughs> and, not, and not want to talk to anyone. Never mind you. They might just be having yeah. a really shit day. They might just... Yeah. just they might, be ha they might be hangry, you know, yeah, they, they yeah. need some chips, the chips are out, they're buying some Spectrum games, but really what they need is chips, you, you, you just don't know, and it's about sort of being okay with people necessarily sometimes not wanting to talk to you, or you not wanting to talk to someone else, like it's, it's okay, as long as everyone's being polite, it's fine, and yeah. then you can meet a lot of really interesting people that way, and the same is true in the online world as well, I generally mm -hmm. say to people, treat the online world the same as the offline world. You can't just DM somebody and be like, hi, you're famous. Please like my content and make me famous. It's, it's just, not, you wouldn't do it to someone in real life. Don't do it to someone online. Talk to people, you know, like like the posts if you actually like them. <laughs> Sorry, <laughs> Paul. Like the post if you actually like them. Retweet things that you actually have something to say about and add your own comment to something you're retweeting of theirs. Support mm. the things you actually like and support, not things you think make you look good if you support them or because you want to get the attention thereof. Like, you know, it's okay to, 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 to tag a relevant company in a tweet or something, but don't necessarily just be shouting at that company because actually what you want is free gaming equipment or something like that. Because I did a I think the other day where I was looking at Mad Cat's mice and I was like, these mice look like tiny tanks. And I was like, these mice look like tiny spaceships. And I photoshopped this image together where I'd put booster rockets on the back and put them on a, a quick, you know, thing I'd grabbed offline of a, a space scene. And I, I put the twist tweet up and I just went, I think secretly these mice are tiny tanks and spaceships. And any second now when we're not looking, they're going to take over the world. And I did tag Mad Cats in that as a tag um, because it was their mice in the picture I'd made. I didn't really expect anything to come of it. They retweeted it and said, Shh, that's privileged information, don't tell anyone, <laughs> which I thought was hilarious. I don't now expect them to suddenly give me the top of the range keyboard and gaming mouse. It, but it was a genuine interaction. Whoever runs that account thought my tweet was funny. I wasn't mm -hmm. just shouting at them and I wouldn't have made a tweet about them if I hadn't just thought that would be a funny thing to Photoshop. So the reaction is is a natural one and they may remember me, they may not, but I'm not just shouting at them. And that's mm -hmm. the main thing. It's about building a natural rapport with people and um, putting things up that encourage a bit of engagement, you know, asking questions in your tweets and and just kind of like, yeah, just building conversations as you would in real life, not just putting, you know, I'm live now, why is nobody watching? <laughs> and things like that, as you see <laughs> some some people doing on, on Twitter. Mm -hmm. And people know if you're just being, people know, if you, if you go and just like all their stuff and retweet their stuff, people know, people know what you're up to. They're not dumb. Yeah. Especially, say, especially bigger creators who have people approaching them quite a lot for, help support and collaborations we've got a few got quite a few yeah down here um big stars from other media sport coming to twitch benefit or competition or both <laughs> both, <laughs> both is the answer uh, with all the people currently utilizing twitch who weren't previously it has brought a massive huge additional amount of audience to twitch who would have never have used it before and we've seen that as well with lockdown the usage numbers the figures of people watching twitch includes tons of people who'd never even heard of it before it's broadening it as well to wider age ranges and and the demographics are just broadening and yeah a lot of those people are coming along to the to the site just to watch those people but they may well stick around and watch other people as well at the end of the day if someone is going on twitch because they want to watch you know this super famous celebrity they aren't necessarily ever going to going to watch the the people like us that isn't necessarily a thing but equally the entire profile of twitch is being raised by these big celebrities using it so I don't think it's competition necessarily because those people were 
always going to be bigger than some of the rest of us. And mm. the longer this goes on as well, the novelty of having super famous person doing super famous thing, you know, unless you're a completely diehard fan of that person, if you are only ever watching them on TV once a week or you're watching their shows once every six months if they're a musician or something going to gigs, um, it isn't quite the same as the, the streams for the, the smaller sort of end of the scale, not the thousands and thousands of people watching at once people. It just isn't quite the same atmosphere watching a super famous person as hanging out in one of like the daytime streams that I do, for example, where we're just chatting about like comic books and um, arguing over who the best Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtle is and stuff like that. That isn't the same. Wrong. Um, <laughs> that isn't the same level of interaction that you're getting with those people. Great answer. Ah, oh, thank you. Uh, lots of questions. We'll get back to the content we vaguely planned we were going to do we've shortly. Gone off and what, one of the questions is, is very much about it. <laughs> we've got some advice here from A Machine Dean. One of the best pieces of advice someone gave Dean for, for, to be brave, have fun and enjoy it. Ignore the stream number if you're having fun. People who come in will too. I'd agree. Your vibe attracts your tribe. So if you're having fun and going with it, you'll find yeah. those people. I'll come yeah. to you. I've always um, said um, don't obsess over the numbers, but uh, and especially if you're doing something as a hobby, if you have a full time day job and you're doing streaming for, for fun and it is always going to be, you know, a hobby or a side hustle, then definitely there is no need to, to look at those numbers. It, it is it is irrelevant. It hasn't isn't having any effect on you. If you are looking to be full time and you're looking to be professional, you do need to pay attention to the numbers, but you shouldn't agonize over every tiny detail. And if you still have a reasonably small audience, and by that I include myself, so anyone who is sub hundreds of viewers, you've got a very small data set there. So if you have uh, 10 viewers, and then one day you have five, you're like, oh my God, 50% of my audience just left. And it's like, no, five people have just gone to watch a football match that's on, or they've all gone to the shops, or they're in the bathroom, whatever. That When you've got a data set that's quite small, that it, it isn't a big enough data set to start making judgments on things. If you've got 500 people watching you and you change something your, about your stream and suddenly half of them leave and they leave consistently, maybe you should have a look at what you changed and is it something that has caused a negative effect that you need to correct? Or have you changed game, for example, because you never want to play Call of Duty again because you've been playing it for three years and you can't cope? And um, <laughs> at which point you say, OK, so I've lost the half of the people that were only here for Call of Duty. However, mm -hmm. half of my audience have stuck around, even though I'm now playing Animal Crossing. So you've got a 50 percent user base retention, even though you've swapped from Call of Duty to Animal Crossing, which is then a win because you've changed format completely. But people liked you enough as a streamer that they're still coming back and you will regrow back that difference. So, yeah, it's one of those things, especially with the smaller numbers. And I include myself in that. Don't get too obsessed over it. Just look for a, a steady overall kind of increase. But when you're bigger, it does make more of an impact and it then is a big enough data set to have some kind of um, results you can analyze. Here's a question that's related to that, actually. Um, running a Twitch chat, mystery Facebook user. Da, um, da, da. Uh, it's like <laughs> running a small cult. What percentage of your time is managing subscribers? Do you feel like you're at their beck and call? The mystery Facebook user obviously wants to know whether or not they can start a cult on Twitch, which is a good question. Um, probably Let's is the answer. Out. I'm sure people are trying. Um, it it is. I, I wouldn't use the word cult, <laughs> but it is running a community. In fact, I was interviewed by somebody about that uh, recently for for a, an article on a website, um, and. There is a lot of community management involved. Bigger streamers have mods and people that are there for them and help manage that community because you do need to be trying to find that line between being accessible to people and making those connections and avoiding just being at people's beck and call. Because if you are always answering everybody and everyone's in different time zones, remember as well, this is a global thing. This is an online thing. You'd never sleep you'd never be able to switch off. You'd never even be able to do your own stream admin stuff and spend time you need to do updating the setup and trying new things and installing the games and bug checking stuff. You know, you, you have to kind of create a balance and control that expectation a little bit. And you also have to make sure that your community is, um, you are mystery Facebook user number one. There's more than one. There's more than one, Robin. <laughs> and um, 
you, you do have to make sure that your community, because they are your community around your channel, um, ideally are non, non-toxic as well. Mm-hmm. Because you see some of the huge channels and you look at the communities and they're not really community managing them. All they care about is the numbers. That's the other end of the extreme. All they care about is the numbers. They don't care if everyone watching their channel is throwing insults because they don't mm-hmm. care as long as they're making those big numbers. And that's where the numbers being big and looking at the numbers can go wrong because it would be better to have the audience like, you know, a third smaller that size where everyone's being respectful to each other because that is the community you're building around your brand. And I've been very, very much um, concerned with making sure that the people know they are welcome, but also that people understand that there will be no bullying and there will be no troll-like behavior mm-hmm. tolerated at all because I'd rather ban someone and have one less viewer than have someone who was uh, being a toxic element within that community. And I very luckily had a lot of compliments from people saying, everyone here is lovely, everyone here is welcoming. My Discord group is like, people are just discussing things really in a really fun, you know, there's some banter and stuff, but it's all fun and respectful. And everyone's on the same page with, this is supposed to be a nice space for us to exist. Mm -hmm. And that's something I hope to maintain. Obviously you get bigger, it gets more difficult to maintain. But that's at the point where I guess you start bringing in other people to help with community management and stuff like that. And that's why community managers exist as a full time paid job for big gaming studios and stuff like that. So, mm-hmm. yeah, it's an interesting that, balance. That's something we've had to do as the Coaching for Geeks Facebook group has grown. It's quite old. It was It's pre-Discord. Otherwise, we might have started it there. But we've had to be quite strict to a certain extent in making it very clear what is acceptable, what's not. And just nudging things in the right direction um mm. like we, we don't really do politics but yes let's talk about which is the best turtle of which <laughs> the audience has <gasps> a, a few few points to make there um that's, that's my own audience trolling me that's yeah, the kind of banter we allow <laughs> <laughs> they, got, they know what they're doing right we've got somebody was asking how to get back back, back to the core content Bex. Um, it was how to get started. Sorry, it was quite a while ago. Um, here we are. What are some of the biggest things to consider when setting up a Twitch channel? Because technical content. neatly pulling us back onto the main the main thread of the uh, the conversation. I like it. Thank you, Seth. Um, I I think the things you need to think about to start with are are finding a balance of wanting everything to be super professional but also taking into account that you don't know when you first start if you're even going to enjoy it three months later. So most of my kit was was secondhand and uh, one of my screens was 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 gifted to me from a friend whose workplace was throwing it out because it's it's a four three flat screen. It's about 15 years old, you know, and uh, the, the computer is a nice PC, but it's secondhand. My keyboard is the one I've had since uni until very recently where my community kindly gifted me this mouse. I was using a, a mouse that was nearly 15 years old. I didn't put I put the money into the things I needed to put the money into, but I didn't want to put the money into everything because otherwise you can end up, you know, those people, you know, you know, when it get, you know, it's like January, and you, you've been going to the gym for years and you go to the gym and in January, suddenly it's just full of everyone <laughs> and they have got designer gym wear and they've got like all of the really posh food supplement, protein shakes. And, you know, they, they look the bomb and they're gone in two weeks time. And you know they spent a hundred pounds on a pair of leggings, you know, and the poshest trainers designed for marathon runners. And all they ever did was sit in the cafe, talk to their mates, and then do five minutes on the rowing machine and go for a swim. I can't possibly do a workout today. My trainers need a software update before. It's so uh, <laughs> it's it's one of those things where you, you don't want to be one of those people that's like all the gear and no idea, because they often quit. Unless you have the biggest disposable income in the world and you can just do that, then you don't need to. I started off with two ancient secondhand screens, ancient mouse, ancient keyboard, a decent PC, that's where the money went, was into getting a secondhand decent PC that a friend of mine helped spec and choose and and sort out for me. Um, Because I I used to build PCs years ago, but I've been very much out the game for that. And I picked and choose what things to, to, to to point the resources at. And I was like, well, what do I need most of all? I was like, I need to have a decent-ish camera. 
I need to have the lighting is important. Mm -hmm. um, the, co the computer, it did crash a lot. We've recently made the computer <laughs> a lot more stable, but it, it did do a lot of crashing before. And the other things could wait. And we, I've just, I've been again, very kindly by the community, I've been gifted a 1080p monitor. But until that point, there was no high definition monitor involved in the stream at all. Um, and I, it, you know, it took a year nearly to, to get to the point of, of, of doing that kind of thing and having these little community goals very kindly, which is what the viewers suggested to do, to, to have little community goals to, to save up, to re slowly replace pieces of kit and add to things because you don't know what you need when you first start. You do not, mm. honest to God, like I have two cameras now. One of them is a, a much cheaper, older, lower resolution camera. That camera is to point at the book that we use, which again, I didn't have to start with either, but I wanted to start putting people's names in a book, partly so I could remember who'd done what and to say thank you to people because I felt like it was a nice thing to do. And after a while, people started requesting I draw things in the book. And um, so when people cheered and, and sent tips to the channel and subscribed, I started drawing these little drawings for people. And people wanted to see me drawing the drawings. So there's a picture of my mod laughing at me playing Alien Isolation. And um, they wanted they wanted to see me drawing the little drawings. And I was like, do you want a drawing, Cam? Do you want, I, my drawings, are they're, they're terrible, right? <laughs> I, I was like, they're terrible. And they were like, yeah, we want a drawing, Cam. And I was like, oh, so I need a second webcam. I, 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 I couldn't have told you that a year ago. I had no idea. So it's very much a case of if you look at these big, massive, posh, high end streamers and go like, right, I need a, a 300 pound camera and I need six of them. And I need to have the biggest high definition 4K monitors running at three million whatever's a second. And I, I need to have a 300 pound keyboard and things. And then you realize like after a year, I'm playing Animal Crossing on the Switch. I haven't touched that keyboard, <laughs> you know? Then you've wasted money on something and you have to pick and choose your investments wisely and decide as you go along. Because you can upgrade something, but you can't downgrade something as easily. Well, I'm sat here, at, I'm currently stopping at my mum's because I wanted to get out of London. And I'm sat yeah. here in, a, a, this is just my laptop screen. I've got a little lamp here. Yeah lighting me up none of this well my laptop's quite expensive and my mouse is quite expensive but it's these are these are old iphone headphones yeah. i've not spent anything and they're things you use for other things as well you don't only use that yeah. laptop yeah. For, for streaming you're not only it's using like gaming thing. It, 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 okay you're precious <laughs> I guess. so it, you, you're utilizing stuff you've you've already got and Very i think that so. can that can make a big difference you know and um you don't always need the poshest, fanciest, like Elgato green screen. We do, are we just stroking our mice just now? Is that a thing? My... Oh, I've just made you go away by stroking my mouse. Come back, Bex. Ah, we appear to have lost Bex from the stream. <laughs> from... One of us may have clicked our mouse button. I'm not sure if it was me or if it was Bex, but it has taken her out of the stream. So let's join in some ASMR mouse stroking while we wait for Bex to return. Hopefully, so just click that link and come back. But that's another thing that happens is there's always technical. Hello. <laughs> Apparently there's a button on my mouse that's clicked to close my browser. <laughs> People are loving the mouse stroking though, but just... maybe we should I needed five minutes alone with it, clearly. Um, <laughs> I, I haven't had a mouse with more than two buttons before. So I um, clearly I didn't know. Apparently one of the buttons on the side of that mouse closes Chrome. Who knew? I'd like <laughs> well, you, something. We all know now. You live we all know. Live on air. <laughs> and there we go. There's another top tip. If something goes wrong, use hashtag pro streamer as Steve Tech says. <laughs> if something goes wrong, just own it. That is... Yeah. Don't ever, if something goes wrong, don't try and look cool. This is my general advice to everyone. This is not just on, on, on YouTube, on, on Twitch, on stage. When things have gone wrong on stage, just own it. Trying to look like, like, oh no, some mysterious thing happened there. It definitely wasn't my fault. It must have been, uh, it must have been Robin's fault. No, I pressed a button on the mouse. Um, everyone can tell if you're trying to, 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 to big yourself up by trying to blame anyone else. Just just own it and you'll have a lot more fun. And also it's part of being human. And Twitch is, is being human. You don't need to be perfect. 
you don't need to, to get everything right the first time you don't need to know everything if i don't know something i go like i've forgotten the name of this actor from this movie we're talking about could someone google that for me because you're having a conversation and it's allowed for you to not be perfect and i think in some ways it's a lot more relatable you know it's not more I, real there's nobody's po -po, but it's perfect. <laughs> yeah, I just nearly ended this entire thing by pressing a button on the mouse. That's that's just how <laughs> I thought it was me stroking my mouse that did it. So, you know, we're there we go. We're all... now, we're, now we're arguing over which of us is the one that broke it. <laughs> <laughs> no, after you, after you, after you. One of us blocked it. We just don't know who. <laughs> um so let's see what we got here. When you do things live, you're meant to do it even if it goes wrong. Yeah. 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 Um, and I think that's easier as well mm -hmm. if you're like aiming for comedy in any way, shape, or form. I wasn't supposed to be shot in the face in a Nerf gun when we did video games IRL, but it was funny. <laughs> yeah. A lot of things weren't supposed to happen when we did video games IRL, but it was funny. The speaker fell off the, the top of my Metal Gear Solid hat immediately and bounced <laughs> off the stage. Yeah. But the contestants special. started stealing it. the prizes. Um, <laughs> It was, it was, it was fine. It was funny. We went with it, and being able to roll with those things is actually part of the skill in being a presenter. You can't control everything, and being able to to go with things. It's like um, I've done a small amount of improv training. I started doing that ages ago. I would love to go back to do some more of it. And yes, and is the first thing you learn when doing improv. It, it's such a it's such a key thing that it's a meme practically in itself. That if some if you're trying to tell a joke and you're working with someone else and they haven't quite got what you were going for and they're going for something else, you can either try and push their joke down, which is going to be awkward, and the audience is going to be like, these people don't like each other, or mm. you can just drop what you're trying to do and go with their joke. Or if their joke's going to be terribly wrong and bad for some reason, and it's going to, you know, you can then divert to something else. But you can't just be there like, no, I'm in control. This is, I want it this way. We're just, I'm just not going to play, you know? Um, you, you have to be collaborative. And sometimes that's with other performers, people you are interviewing. Sometimes that's with the audience as well. Mm. And that doesn't just apply to Twitch, but it's, very much at the forefront on on Twitch. Um, the best example of that was one stream where we were going to be playing a game. I can't remember what game it was. And somehow people started talking to me about something that happened on TV that week. I went off on a tangent and I went, oh God, we've been live 40 minutes. I haven't started the game. Do you guys want me to play the game? And they're just this entire chat filled of people going, no, can we keep talking about this? <laughs> and I was like, well, all right then, this is fun. And we did that instead. <laughs> and um, sometimes you've got to listen to the audience same skills if you're playing dungeons and dragons and you're the dungeon master as well yes and and rolling with it and not mm. steamrolling it where you want it to go yes uh, super valuable skill to having life yeah no no railroading no <laughs> unless you're building a railroad <laughs> you found the edge case to that statement. <laughs> All right, we've got questions. Hexos for TV is trying to create content on other platforms to grow the stream. The full time job, I feel like I'm going too slow in that regard. Should I try to speed it up or not worry and just focus on quality videos with longer time between releases? Ooh, good question. Thank you. Yeah, so there, there are arguments in both directions of these things. Um, you're trying to create content on other platforms to grow, to grow your Twitch stream. And um, that there is a lot of people that say, yeah, make all these things on other platforms to grow this. But to they, they often push people in the direction of like, make highlight clips of your stream and put them on YouTube. Unless your highlight clips have some amazing clickbait title, like, you know, I, I just won the international world contest for this famous battle royale, here's all my headshots or something like that. Or unless this is like something where something specific happens, like no no one is looking for compilations of streamers they haven't heard of clips. Mm. And I see a lot of people, they see like big names, we won't mention the names of, put up, street, put up videos of their clips of stuff. People are looking for them because of the name on them. They aren't finding the Twitch channel because of those compilation clips. They are going to the compilation clips to see more content of that streamer. So if you're making content on other platforms, 
then you want to make things that are either worthwhile in their own right, they are adjacent to what you're doing in some way or other. So people will sometimes watch, because my YouTube content's not got any of my Twitch content on it, because the YouTube channel was there for years first. But people will sometimes see a video of me interviewing an indie game developer, and then they'll see I also am on Twitch, and then they might see I'm also Twitch streaming that game and they might come across that way. But I haven't just put up clips of highlights of me playing that game on YouTube. Loads of people are doing it, and I see that advice given so often, but unless it is like, you know, most hilarious moments ever, best headshots ever, and even then you've got to compete with people that just take clips of other YouTube uh, YouTube channels and other Twitch streams, and they make them on their massive, like, clip collections YouTube channels that basically just monetize taking funny clips of other people's content you're still competing with that. So don't feel like you need to break your back trying to make all of these like YouTube videos and other things. You, if you want to put up short clips and take your best clips from uh, from Twitch and put them up on YouTube, you can do that. I also recommend putting them up onto your social media as well. If you put a clip up uh, that you, where you've downloaded and re-uploaded it to Twitch and you've got a clip of you doing something funny and it goes like, hey, look what happened, come watch tonight, this is probably gonna happen again, then people are likely to watch that video because it is embedded in the social media. But if you're just putting stuff up on YouTube, um, kind of um, hoping they'll find you the other way, it's gonna be quite difficult. Original content, not highlights. That's definitely better than just doing highlights. Uh, I would say that, but I would consider, do you want to be a YouTuber as well? I like doing both, I specifically want to do both. And I, you can put occasional videos up on YouTube and they can be found. But if you want to succeed on YouTube, unfortunately, the algorithm is basically quantity over quality. But that is no good for you and your reputation. So we're constantly stuck between this idea of if we don't upload often enough, we fall off the search algorithms versus I only want to put things up that are properly edited and properly put together. So it's very difficult to juggle both of those things. So I think just... You have to think, well, how much time do you want to dedicate to, to each of these things? And where do you want to put your efforts? Building up a YouTube audience, it can bring people over to Twitch, but it's not guaranteed to in any way, shape or form. And a lot of people that are watching me on Twitch now, yeah, there are some people who started off on the YouTube channel, but it's not it's not just those people. And some people go the other way. At the end of my Twitch streams, if I've talked about something, I'll say, oh, there's also a YouTube video about that. And sometimes it goes the other way. So consider where you want to focus most of your efforts. I know Twitch isn't very discoverable, but definitely for me, I think the social media stuff brings in more direct traffic to Twitch than YouTube does. And I would suspect that YouTube, uh, from an algorithm perspective, although I of course have no proof of anything like that, probably doesn't want to be pushing loads of content that's full of links to a rival platform. So bear in mind that the, the, the great AI based powers that be might not <laughs> might might not necessarily uh, want to push that content as well. Um, it's a it's a changing landscape, but I think just yeah, don't don't break yourself trying to do everything all the time, um, no, it, and be okay with it being a smaller a smaller growth. It sounds like you're possibly trying to do too much and focusing on quality Twitch streams and creating content to market that. To, and, and engaging with people on Twitter or whichever platform you choose to do it on, mm. you, you, you've got to pick the ones that are your strongest suit. If you're engaging with the people who are playing that game that you're streaming and the, the creators and the developers, those sorts of people, again, you, your vibe attracts your tribe and you're going to find those people who will be interested in you. For me, I'm yeah. going all coachy. Yeah, you this, are. This is, this is what I do for my job, folks. <laughs> come and join us over in Coaching for Geeks. That's I think if you're doing the YouTube videos just because you want to promote the Twitch stuff, the love won't be in the YouTube videos. If you also love doing YouTube videos and you're happy to get a little bit of cross-pollination in both directions from those things, then try to do your best to keep doing all of them, but schedule yourself so you are not going to burn out. Do less Twitch streams and some YouTube videos rather than trying to do three full-time jobs effectively and just try and find balance with it is all I can suggest there. All right, we've got a couple more questions. We're yeah, no the worries. Hour mark. We've got, um, do you feel that streamers have to be on cam or can they get away with just streaming game footage? 
it's definitely a lot harder, especially to start with, to build an audience if you don't have a camera, because your reactions and being able to make eye contact with someone is a huge amount of having a conversation. So it is definitely a lot easier with a camera because people can see, like imagine um, Penguin, I know you were there when I was playing Alien Isolation. If you could just hear my yelps and the sound of that controller being dropped when the, the, that I got terrified of the game versus being able to see me and the expression on my face, um, I, I think you can see the difference in how engaging that would be. Some people do make it without a camera. And if you really don't want to be on camera, then didn't do that. Don't don't be on camera if you really if, if you're not just shy, but if you actively do not want to do it. But bear in mind, it is a lot harder to, to get there without one. Yeah, we've got a response there. We've watched a few big streamers who just use mic, no cam. Doubt you'll get far with neither. Yeah. Um, that's true. There's got to be some kind of expression of what you're doing and those reactions. Um, yeah. Unless then... you are the world's absolute, absolute best at something and just purely the joy of watching you play that game is like watching a magician and you are number one in the world of it, winning esports contests everywhere. You're unlikely to get there without any mic or any camera, but you can... You can, you can, some people do it just with, with voice, especially if you have, if you're okay to be very expressive with your voice and you are talking a lot, you may be able to, it is more difficult, but if you're not going to enjoy being on camera, being on camera will be more of a detriment than not being on camera. So it's balance, yeah. it's balancing it up and, um, and deciding if you want to, to try and work to get past the social anxiety about the camera, or if you just don't want to, and that's personal choice. Honestly, I would say, have a go when you're starting out you're going to have a small audience anyway mm. um if you make it so that it's not clippable it doesn't store it you can just have a go yeah and put it out there uh and see how you feel because it might be the fear of it rather than actually putting it out there that's mm. uh, or do that's a couple with just anxiety. voice only and see how mm. you feel and then you know, try one with a camera and see if it's had a massive negative effect or not. I mean, like I said, the first streams I ever did, they are up on, uh, I made a separate YouTube channel just to, to kick a few of the streams onto at one point. I was shaking and I'd done years of YouTube stuff. Um, so it it is a it is a thing that it, it can be quite scary, but it can be it can be overcome um, if you want to. But if you don't want to just just try and do voice only and see how you go. Uh, no cubes, good example of a YouTuber streamer can do mic and no cam very well. Check it out. And if you do want to work through social anxiety and stuff, then uh, come and join Coaching for Geeks. Or you know what? There's there's plenty of help out there. Um, I've had lots of therapy and NLP and all kinds of stuff. I used to be an absolute fucking mess. Um, who's self-medicated with drink and drugs, but now I'm like, give me the stage. Here I am, my darling. <laughs> You're amazing on stage. You have so much charisma and so much fun with it. Okay. And um, you come on leaps and bounds. It's amazing. The bigger the audience, the more I prefer it. My favourite audience ever was uh, at MCM, where I had 3,000 people. Thank you very much. Uh, big bright lights. This isn't about me. Back to you. Uh, <laughs> But we can I, talk a little bit about, you know, confidence on camera and stuff. Was that the next bullet point we had on the list? I don't even know anymore. But You've lost the point. place on the bullet points. Well, that's fine. Uh, Again, that's well, the joy of a Q&A. Done that. We've done that one. We've, we've done some of that, that one. How, how do I you can get, run through that again. How, how do you get both your face and a game on the telly? What was, <laughs> how does that work? <laughs> There are a few different bits of software that people use for streaming. I would also suggest even if the screens are super old and you got them out of a dumpster and they are 4.3 or whatever they are, have two screens, that makes a huge difference. Um, if you're using a capture card or whether you're playing games on the computer, you, you then use pieces of software people may have heard of. One, one is called OBS Studio. The other option is called Streamlabs OBS. I use Streamlabs OBS. That one is a bit more of a, a, a bloated bit of software, but it also contains tons of out the box stuff that just makes it easy to do a lot of things that you've seen a lot of streamers do. 
and um, then you can use like little chatbot stream bot streamlabs do a streamlabs chatbot i also use that lets you set off the sound effects and things like that and have stuff appear on the screen and stuff and um it seems very daunting and a lot of these things they the, to be fair the interfaces on this stuff a lot of it is not that intuitive as someone who designs interfaces and and, and web stuff like i look at a lot of things going but why can't i double click that to edit it why do I have to click it, then go find this edit button, then go to here? Why, why can't I double click that? And there are things that are, you know, you do feel very confused, but there are loads of resources out there that do a lot of step by step stuff. But I say generally, like my stream started and it was camera, microphone, lights and me. And I didn't have anything else. And, and I just did some talking and I figured out how to do that. The, the next one I added on like a logo. You know, and, and and every week or month or whatever suits your schedule best. I try to just change one thing, one thing. And that's also how you evolve something without ending up in the all the gear, no idea kind of scenario. If you just change one thing every week, just go like, actually, I want a fancy overlay. And then you get like a free overlay or a, or a 10 pound overlay pack from somewhere. And then later you're like, I don't really like those. I want to make my own one. I'll just I'll just make something simple. And as I went on, I, I added more things slowly but surely. I started adding some links to the to the side saying that, oh, I also had a Patreon and this was my YouTube channel URL. But after a while, I realized that no one really noticed them. People were saying to me, do you have a YouTube channel? Well, I was like, the, the, it's here. It says it here. And I was like, oh, because it doesn't move and it's just static and it's on a dark background, no one's noticing it. So I swapped that little bit of my very, very, still very simple user interface like that I've got by, by my, my overlay to just be a little a carousel of a couple of different images that say i've got a youtube channel i've got a thing here's my schedule it's not too shouty it's not too in your face that everything doesn't need big massive fanfare animations but i just changed that one thing because i realized people weren't uh, finding what was there helpful so you just slowly add stuff as you learn don't feel like you need to know everything from the start i didn't even play a game on stream for like the first like three or four weeks um then, then I, you know, figured out how to add the game capture and and have those things and put like a little feed, a little picture, mini me and the game, and um, you you just kind of evolve it and work it from that point on. So don't feel like you have to buy everything or learn everything to start with. If you got if you got like a you know the, the camera, the mic, um, a light of some of some sort, and it, it's okay quality, then then you can start and you can figure out what you need as you go on. But if you do want to set up OBS or Streamlabs, do expect to spend quite a bit of time to get how you want. Like you say, yeah. I was doing it three weeks ago or setting up StreamYard and it is not intuitive. And I think of myself as relatively tech savvy. I was yeah. following, just following along with a YouTube uh, tutorial, um, but now I can use my phone to switch between scenes and all kinds of fancy stuff. Yeah, and but it's one of those it, things. It yeah. was a mess. It was an absolute mess, and it was fun. Yeah, it's it all new fun. technology. Twitch is a new platform. Like, effectively, I've said this before to people, the internet's a fairly new thing in the world still, you know, compared to, like, fire and conversation. So these things are new. Twitch is one of the newest things, and it is growing at an exponential rate. So it is still kind of made out of all of these weird disparate things. There are loads of different options for the chatbots, and, and you know, you've got the different options for everything, and, and loads of things are just free or open source type stuff that you just kind of trying to make talk to each other, and sometimes it works, and sometimes it doesn't quite work, or you're like, but why do I have to do this, to do this, to do this? Um, so it is better to just just learn each thing each week and add to it because otherwise you'll be there for ages and then realize that you've learned loads of stuff you never actually use um and then you can figure out over time what you need to add because the latest thing that that, that we're adding that i'm going to be setting up is a one of those Ooh, fancy so nearly a year into streaming this is this is what's going to be and, and and it isn't you know i didn't say i wanted the one that's like the size of a keyboard i was like this is this is a sensible size this is a stream deck a lot of people have heard of these i've seen people that are streaming for like two days and they've bought one of these and i'm like really you don't even know if you need it but once you've got different things that need to happen i started to see more and more the benefits for me personally of having one of these 
What's but it I do for people who The don't Stream Deck know. is basically like a programmable extra keyboard. It can program uh, either simple things like changing scene. So if you wanted to change, say, example, there's two of us on the screen right now, moving it to just one of us on the screen and back again, or going to a BRB, everything is broken screen, things like this. Instead of having to like get your mouse, go into your it be it OBS or Streamlabs OBS, yeah, I'm not touching any of the buttons, and go and press buttons and you're doing this and stuff, you can program the things onto buttons here. And the other one I've learned is that occasionally you get attacked by loads of bots on, on Twitch, and it tends to happen, you know, after a little while. And at which point I needed to, because it happened to me a few times in a row, and I needed to go and turn off notifications, set my chat to subscriber only, clear and refresh the chat because they were posting obscene things into it that were designed specifically not to be caught by all of the spam filters and stuff I put in place. And I needed to go and click like 20 different things. I could program one button to do that. And it's got to the point where I do need to be able to do that. But for the first six months, I definitely didn't need to be able to do that. Mm -hmm. So it, it's a case of like, I've got to the point now where this super fancy shiny thing is like a is is going to be a very good upgrade but i would never have considered using one of these from day one um and there are various like other things you can do like yeah various phone apps and stuff my phone doesn't work properly so that would not work for me at all but like you can get various phone apps and stuff that do some similar things and um you, you can find those ways to do things so i think just just pick and choose what you're doing over time as you need it and don't feel like you need to learn everything because there's a squillion different ways to do everything. There is no right or wrong way of doing it. There are just different ways with slightly different results. We had a question. Sorry, I've missed it. It was quite a long way back. Yeah, what no you worries. Were asking, um, Stick some more questions up. Is it, is it only for gaming or can you do other things? Well, this this is going out on Twitch. Now yeah. this isn't. This isn't gaming. You can do other stuff. There's you can do whatever you like. I watch a lot of artists. People do think like because Twitch started originally and there was a lot of gamers on there, but it isn't just gaming. I mean, the daytime streams I do, which I started because of lockdown to keep people company, but I think we're going to keep doing. They're chatting streams. We literally just chat about TV, cartoons, comic books, computer games, Dungeons and Dragons. We just hang out and chat, and people use it almost like radio but you can talk back to it kind of thing. And and just chatting streams are a fairly big thing on various specialist topics. People do educational things like we're doing this Q&A now. People also do art streams. I love the art streams because you can watch people's paintings and ask them questions about how they are creating stuff as they go along. And that's absolutely wonderful. So I follow quite a lot of artists, but there, there is absolutely everything as well. Um, yeah, a lot of comedians as well have started doing stand up and interactive stuff like that because it is, as I said, like quite a while ago on, on, on this stream, it is between a YouTube video and being on stage. You've mm -hmm. got that interaction, albeit with like a four second delay and um, it's text based <laughs> coming back at you rather than being able to see the audience reaction. And you've got a whole bunch of your audience that don't talk in chat as well, which is fine, of course. And um, I will say that to people now, don't call out people that are there but not talking. They are a massively important part of the Twitch community. Um, but some people Look will there, be talking. Yeah. yeah, some people will talking. Some people don't want to. They're, they're either shy, they've put something on in the background, um, they're just checking out the stream and they, they don't want to interact yet. Uh, or or they, they just don't like to, they just like to view and, and observe and um, be part of the Treating community like in a slightly TV more of a, just yeah, watching which is it and enjoying the content. Entirely valid. So yeah, loads of comedians, musicians and people like that. I mean, there were always these people on Twitch, but now we've just got a lot more familiar names. There's a musician that I watch who's a drummer and they're awesome. They have this like super cool setup. They're called Night Bites. It's one of the reasons I found them is their names are oh, almost the same as mine. Nice. <laughs> yeah, exactly. <laughs> and um, he's this awesome drummer and he has this super cool setup and Twitch chat can decide which camera you're looking at and can change the colored lights on his drum kit and you can send him song requests and he plays awesome tunes. And that's this really fun interactive somewhere between like being in a room with someone while they're playing drums and watching a live performance, but it's more interactive than that. And I think a lot of comedians and a lot of famous people who might have slightly disregarded things like Twitch in the past have suddenly discovered that here's a whole nother slightly different way of uh, delivering content and um, having fun with it. So yeah, any anyone is welcome. Don't be afraid to do stuff that other people aren't doing. Um, oh, awesome, C-Tech. Well, we're glad that you found people that you enjoyed watching. Yeah. I only do this is because StreamYard allows me to. Normally, I would just do this into my Facebook group. 
cfgshortcut.com for the folks at home. Um, but, 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 but the Sonic, why not put it out on Twitch as well? And we found new people and met new people and having a lovely time because we found this this extra audience to, to have a fun time with. And we've got some emotes. <laughs> <laughs> That's a thing I don't understand. Yeah, it's all the emotes and reactions and stuff. We'll talk the about emotes. That. Yeah, the emotes are, um, you just get custom ones. So if you're part of someone's community, if you're a subscriber on Twitch, you get their custom emotes and they're just good fun. They're just a good extra. They're, they're like little club badges that, you know, you have when you join VIP or uh, fan club things like when you were a kid. It's just like the badges and little ID cards. You know, I'm one of the Marvel Avengers cards and stuff like that. They're just really <laughs> good fun. And I didn't get them to start with. But I um, definitely enjoy them a lot more now. And uh, as, apart from when I turn up in people's streams and everyone spams my own face emote at me because that's just super <laughs> surreal. <laughs> so I accidentally clicked on this, but that's probably a good time to talk about it when creating personalised content. Is copyright a big problem or a big issue? Uh, it is currently very much a hot topic because there have been a lot of DMCA takedowns by the music industry recently. Uh, copyright is definitely a big issue. It's one of those things where a lot of people have um, not really considered it when they're making their streams. And um, then the copyright holders are sort of just coming down with a hammer now and saying, People are watching entire TV episodes with their audience. That's not actually okay. That's redistribution. People are showing films. People are using a lot of copyrighted music and stuff like that. So I would say the safest way to go is to just not use not use anything that is copyrighted. Uh, that's just guarantees you are completely and utterly safe. Um, there's slightly weirder gray areas with like, you know, I have a like five second alert noise that's a snippet from a tune. And I'm like, do I need to take that down as well? Because it doesn't replace it listening to the tune at all. Mm -hmm. It's also in no way a, a modern, you know, it's not it's not a current hit in the charts. This isn't affecting the sales or reputation of of anything like that. Um, but yeah, it it is a it is a complicated discussion, definitely. But definitely if if you're thinking, you know what I'm gonna do, I'm gonna sit here and we're gonna watch every episode of Game of Thrones live on air don't um, and um, I would suggest wherever you can use copyright free resources for everything just to make sure that you are on the right side of that law and just think about like would you be okay for someone to use your stuff in that way as well so it's 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 it's, it's a very it's a, we could do an entire stream just on talking on that if people wanted because it is a very complicated discussion Next definitely time that we've, we've overrun already and i know you've got another stream to do later so um, to yeah well, i think we've, we can do just ask us for a few more questions if you like but i will leave it up to you owner yeah. of the stream isn't streaming same content to multiple platforms against the terms and conditions i'm not an affiliate so yeah. i'm allowed to uh once you get affiliate status you can't um but i'm i'm a baby streamer like i say this is purely an, an adjunct to what we're doing so we're all right yeah, if you are an affiliate, you then cannot put the content from your Twitch live stream on another platform for 24 hours. After 24 hours, you can rebroadcast it or put it anywhere else you like. It's just the first 24 hours. So multi-streaming is only okay before you are affiliated. Um, and you can always, if, if you're just streaming for fun, you can always just never become affiliate. You could always just never accept that agreement if you yeah. just wanted a multi-stream everywhere and you didn't actually want to, to become an affiliate and have the emotes and the other perks of that, it's just down to a uh, personal choice. But if you are putting that content up on Twitch and you are in a position where you can earn even a small amount of money for it, then you're affiliated with them. That's in a business transaction. So yeah, just keep it on Twitch for the first 24 hours. Yeah. And then we've got lots of emotes going on. Ah, uh, yeah, that's my, me as a Muppet. That's that first coffee. one. Yeah, the first one is me as a Muppet. <laughs> I'm getting close. Oh, look. We've got fat. Oh, that's my, yeah, that's the one. That's the one. I just um, made that emote because I didn't have any, and now no one will let me change it. They love it. And whenever I turn up in stream. So I've been to a few streams uh, where someone's gone, what's all this woman's face appeared in chat? And I'm like, that's my face. Sorry. <laughs> Hi. <laughs> Right. It's good fun. It's good fun. Hey, Witchy Nick, that's fine. You can catch up on this later. It will be on my Twitch. It will be in my Facebook group, Coach for Geeks. And at some point, we'll probably put it out as a... Yeah, 
upload it onto the YouTube as well. Put it definitely. Out the blog as well. You will, it, you'll be able to get it. Don't you worry. Um, cool. Um, have we got any more questions you want to run through? Have, have we missed any? Ah, oh, thank you very much. <laughs> Every day's a school day. It is. It is. And I'm it still really learning. Is. After pressing a button on the mouse, I've now learned it closes Chrome. So I've learned to. <laughs> um, have we missed any questions? Anybody? If we've missed them, post them again because this chat has moved quite fast. Because we've got, I've got the Facebook and, and the, uh, the YouTube's the, the, the Twitch one going on here. I think I've missed one or two, which I apologise for. Can you Twitch privately? Um, uh, there's there's can. some. There are subscriber only streams, but that wouldn't really suit the purpose that you're looking for there. I would suggest looking at another platform for that one. I, I don't think you could do YouTube lives completely privately either. The link is still available mm. if anyone wants to, if anyone could figure out the URL, that's, that still isn't completely private. I think uh, Vivo is probably the best one for, for fully secure videos, but I don't know if they do a streaming version. Yeah, if you're doing it for a class, you're probably better off using a, a more of a web conferencing thing. And if you want yeah. to record it and put it out later. Zoom so. and stuff like that is probably the, the best bet for that one. Um, do you have any advice on like, hobbies and crafts and that kind of stream? Ooh. I've also just thought for the classes, Discord is a is a very good option as well, because they could put everyone in a private Discord server and then... Um, then use that. Uh, hobbies and crafts, there are loads of streamers who do sewing and um, creative things on, on Twitch. Definitely have a look and see see what you can find. There are entire categories, cosplayers making costumes and things like that. They usually have multiple cameras, one showing them talking, one showing what they're working on. People paint loads of miniatures, like um, your, mm. your 40K miniatures and stuff like that. Those are amazing to see, like zoomed in camera and just a hand and a voice. That's a lot of people that don't have face cams, in fact, doing the crafting stuff. You'll hear their voice and you're seeing them you know doing the crafting thing and if their face isn't you know needed because they're just pulling a concentration face and talking they'll just show you a close-up of what they're working on so that's quite an, an, another common area to have no face cam as well mm -hmm. and we had a response to the question about using uh if classroom we've got classroom.google.com with google mm -hmm. Meet. Okay. Very yeah various options out there i think yeah, yeah thank you um have we, have we got have we missed anything Anybody pop, pop your questions in now, or we'll we'll be gone because we're gonna have to let Bex go and prepare for your next stream. What what have you got coming up this evening? We are playing some more Mega Drive retro games. We're gonna be playing some Story of Thor, which I think I just put down. Never mind. A Story of Thor. It's called Beyond Oasis Abroad. It's a little like hack and slash uh, Zelda type game that was on the Mega Drive. I love it. We do most. We do a lot of chatting. We do a lot of chatting. I I, I always say to people, I'm not a speed runner. Don't expect perfect scores on things. I spend as much time reading, chat, and talking as I do playing the game. And um, they're fairly just chill. And we just like to hang out and talk about geek nonsense. That's it, really. It's it's all it's all become. I thought it, I thought originally my Twitch channel was going to be this proper like hardcore VR mixed reality thing. We were going to play all these VR games, and it was all going to be focused on the gameplay and. Um, yeah, no, <laughs> this is what it's evolved into. And I'm loving every minute of it. So I'm happy I just followed with the flow of where the viewers wanted to go with it and where I was enjoying stuff because that's how you get to the best results, really. Just pick something you love to do. You're not, you're not going to make it on any platform by doing something just because you think it will get big numbers. It will show through. People will suss that actually you hate that game after like six years if you're just playing one game because you think Fortnite will make you famous. You know, There's categories yeah. for everything. There's an audience for everything. And your audience may be slightly smaller and more niche than than things than things that you see these top guys playing but they're also a very dedicated audience that are looking for that content and don't have that content and yeah people like watching me jump terrified at alien isolation never thought i'd be playing a horror game never thought that would happen and apparently they want me to play that some more from some more saturday bonus scary scream streams because that's what they're laughing at so that's you know again come from the people watching me as a suggestion um playing mega drive games people were sort of reliving reliving our youth together or discovering new retro games together and loads of ones where we just chat so yeah there's room for everyone there's room for everything basically it's it's a really really awesome platform i'm loving it thank you ever so much for your time sharing your insight and all your 
knowledge, skills, and experience, um, and pressing your mouse button at the, just the perfect moment. It was um, to prove a point. It was educational. It was. Uh, have fun with your stream later. We have got one more very important question. Okay. We've been asked. Um, sure, you you stream games and you chat uh, and you talk geeky nonsense. But have you ever considered singing on stream? Maybe it's <laughs> about a young shark and its family. <laughs> <laughs> oh, why did I tell my viewers I was going to be here today? <laughs> we don't mention the song that shall not be named and nobody blackmailed me with a hype train of bits and cheers into singing that song and there are definitely no clips. <laughs> well, I'm glad that there definitely aren't any clips. Um, that was a great q &A. I agree. Thank, thank you, you very so much. much. Um, More so of me as a muppet. <laughs> more, more, more Bex Muppets. Um, everybody, go if you're not already. Go follow, go follow Bex. Um, hang on, where is it? There it is. Twitch.tv forward slash Trista Bites. If you've got a spare subscription going and you like her content, do throw it her way. If you are on Amazon Prime, you, ha you you've got a subscription to use. Um, use it for one of your favourite uh, broadcaster streamers. It, it helps them. Uh, to do what they're doing, and if you're enjoying the content, and that's uh, that's brilliant. We've got loads of uh oh, uh -oh. <laughs> <laughs> no, not that song, not that song. No, 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 no. I'm being trolled. <laughs> this is it. This is it. I'm being trolled by by my own viewers live on air. And that's you're love. encouraging that's... them. You're encouraging. Them. <laughs> of course I am. I know you. I've I've. Your, I follow you. I know what's going on. I'm going to encourage them to troll you. That's that's it, guys. We're, we're, we're done. So thank you. Big round of applause for everyone at home who can't hear us for. For Trista Bates, the star in the movie. Oh, thank you. That's for me, darling. I'm the star. You're me. already a star. <laughs> You're already a star. <laughs> so, right, last banners then. Follow, follow Bex. Get, get following. If you're not, then... Thank following. you so much. And thank you very much for having me on this Q&A. And if people have enjoyed it, then please send us some feedback. Let me know if you'd like us to do this again or follow it, you know, do any other different topics and stuff like that. And uh, just give us a shout because I've had a great time. And um, yeah, thank you again, Robin. You guys are always awesome. fun hanging out. You're always welcome back. Um, right, you lot. Bex's Bex's bunch. You've got to start following me now. That's me. You're probably, you're probably <laughs> That's the deal. Too. That's why That's you really deal. wanted them all here. Um, That's the deal. Have a look at the website. We've got loads of content around confidence and gaming and introvert stuff and networking and all the good stuff that is to basically is what I've learned going from an uh, absolute mess to becoming uh, a coach. Hit up the Facebook group if you want. If, if you want, I know nobody's really on there anymore, are they? But sorry, Facebook ground. I know <laughs> cfgshortcut.com. That'll take you straight into our Facebook group where we can take care of you. And Chunky Mom would love this to be done again. So let's let's do it again sometime. We'll rerun the fun. Yeah, absolutely. Right, I'm just trying to find my brand stuff to play the outro. <laughs> right. <laughs> all right. Well, that case. We'll see you all next time. Thank you so much for your time, Bex. Have a great stream later. and we'll Thank you very much. Take care, guys. We'll see you soon. Bye. See, this bit always goes very, very well. <laughs> we're, still, we're still... Pro streamers. Still pro streamers. Um, bye, everybody. <laughs>